everybody. Time Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well here. My voice is a little bit uh, rough this morning, but I'll be okay. Don't worry about that. What we do need to be paying extra close attention to today is our moderate risk for severe weather. It's the second day in a row that we've gotten one of these, and this is a very palpable tornado threat. It's not very often that you see a 15% area pop up here. It's a hatch risk, so the threat for strong to violent long track tornadoes is possible today over the Ohio Valley. So you need to be doing everything you can if you are in this red or even the yellow or even brown even, even the green. I'll even go ahead and say that. Heck, you need to be doing what you need to do to stay weather aware today because this could be a pretty nasty event. The wind threat is also very palpable. There's a hatch risk for that in a 30% area, which is equivalent to an enhanced risk. And also there is a 30% hail threat with a hatched risk over towards the Ohio Valley as well. So everything's in play here. Everything's on the table here. The thing to make note of here though, is there is a fail parameter and this could make or break the day in regards to severe weather. Is going to be mainly consistent around the storms that we have right now. So if we go over to our current reflectivity, these are the storms from last night. They got pretty active overnight here. And these storms are going to go through this area over the course of the next couple of hours. And this is going to use a little bit of energy in the atmosphere, a good bit of energy. Question is, can the atmosphere over this area recover? Because there's going to be a lot of convection but if this atmosphere does recover we could have a threat where we have all hazards possible supercells could come into play here like I said the conve the amount of convection is really showing well on here so like I said ceiling is high but uncertainty really lies with how these storms will uh, end up forming as we go later into the day here so like I said, if you live anywhere from East Central Ohio all the way through towards Louisville and maybe even further to the south towards maybe Central Kentucky, North Central Kentucky, I'd say, make sure you are staying on guard here. You're going to have a couple rounds of storms. This first round may not be all that significant. The second round might be the one to watch here. Like I said, with the convection coming into play early this morning, there's a chance that this may not do much of anything. It could literally go either way. It could be a big outbreak or it could be a bust. So we'll have to see how this pans out. Really, we're not going to know probably until about a couple hours before with the event starting here. So look at, at our setup kinematically. What we can see here is this trough coming into play. And this is the key. This is another key player right here is this big trough right here. That's going to be bringing a lot of cold air on the backside of this. It's going to be that interaction that's going to be the key to everything. It's almost like a secondary trough ejection tries to develop here. And that's really when the, the threat to the south kind of takes off is once this is introduced here. So this mid-level cyclone is going to have to be monitored really closely. If it progresses any faster or slower than what's forecast is going to make a huge difference as to what lies ahead here. And then here is our mid levels of the atmosphere. We're mainly looking for a short wave, and I do see a couple of them, but things really start to amp up towards the afternoon. Like I said, instability is really going to be the key to everything. It's my alarm going off. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Anyway, short wave is definitely present with this system, and I think that's going to help storm development. Like I said, real key is instability. Everything else is kind of set pretty good for this. So here is that low level jet key component to tornado genesis and we get a really strong low level jet here so like i said kinematically the setup's in a good place for severe weather and tornadoes in particular but as we continue to go on here dew points are not shabby either we get a really strong moisture return early in the day and it hangs around like i said this is a key component to instability also Temp surface temperature is important as well and we do get a nice little uh pocket right here where we're still in the 60s and 70s here so like i said it's not like we have a zero percent chance of severe storms that convection is not going to use all of the energy up in my personal opinion but like i said it's really going to come down to the last minute when we figure out exactly what sticks to, what's to be expected here 
we're going to actually go ahead and do things a little bit differently here and look at our low level cape. And what we'll notice is we do have a good bit of three cape here. So this, it's not like this morning event is going to be completely innate in producing severe weather. I think there could be a few severe thunderstorm warnings, maybe even some tornado warnings. But watch what happens as we get towards the afternoon. HRRR is forecasting that we do not lose our instability. In fact, we start to increase as we get into the afternoon here. So keep in, if the sun's coming out towards these regions, definitely be on the lookout here. It's so like I said, this higher uh, level of three cape here is going to be a key component to a lot of things. And if I click on this sounding here, for example, while it's not the most incredible tornado sounding, look at where that instability is. 2,000 joules per kilogram. Put it in perspective for you, 1,000 joules per kilogram is enough for severe weather. It's where you can get a little bit of everything. But look at how high some of these numbers are over here. I'm definitely thinking that at the very least, at some point, we'll get the sun to pop out towards these regions. If not, the like I said, the atmosphere just looks like it's very much prone to recovering. Then of course, as we get later into the evening, we'll have to watch the deep south. <laughs> So looking at our overall mixed layer cape, numbers I'm, I'm anticipating to be pretty notable here. Of course, this is only one model to look at, and I don't have time to look at all of them. Of course, that would take hours. I'm pretty sure a lot of you don't want me to do that. But if we look at mixed layer cape as a whole here, more than sufficient enough for severe weather. Like I said, will this verify? That is the key question here to all of this. Because like I said, kinematically, we're pretty stacked if I were to say so myself if you look at the significant the uh, significant tornado parameter it kind of shows especially as we get later into the day especially towards Indiana and then eventually into Ohio by the time we get into the late afternoon now the thing with this is I am going to be working a full day today so there is a chance I'm going to miss a good chunk of this unfortunately Really depends on other factors such as traffic, etc. But if I can get here early, I'm gonna try and and gonna probably just run straight into being live. So that being said, wish me luck. That's all I can really say. I'm gonna do the best I can you got for you guys to be here. If not, like I said, if you live in these areas, because I actually have family over here in Ohio, make sure you have a way to get watches in the mornings. That's really the best thing I can really tell you at this point. Do notice that later towards the evening, we see this line segment of storms heading toward heading through Mississippi and Alabama. Definitely need that definitely warrants attention in its own right. And you need to be on guard over here as we're heading into Georgia, because this is most likely going to be an overnight severe threat. You are in that 5% area for tornadoes and you do have a 15% wind and hail threat. So could be a pretty nasty night. But that being said here, Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Smash that like button, obliterate that subscribe button, and also hit that share button. Make sure you also have that bell on to be notified of every video and every stream. But that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe, and I'll see you soon. It's been Tyre Metalhead Weatherman. Have a good rest of your day.